on the wrong side of the tracks in places where education is not valued, where drugs, violence, and gangs abound, and where schools are low performing. They often lack community help and support. All of these factors promote high school dropouts. When students drop out of school, they are often left unemployed and without means of providing for themselves or their families. Also, they are left with a lot of time on their hands to get into trouble, which eventually leads to, act, to illegal activity and violence. Poverty is an, another large contributor to Chicago's violence surge. According to the Federal Census Bureau, among the 10 largest cities in America, Chicago has the third highest poverty rate with 21.6% of, of our residents living under the federal poverty line. Impoverished citizens are often those who become criminals in order to survive. A study conducted by the Illinois Department of Corrections showed that 62% of its offenders came from impoverished families. There is no clear solution to the issue of violence that exists in the city of Chicago today. The causes, however, are clear. Gang violence, a widespread lack of education, and extreme poverty are partially to blame for the increase of violence that is surging across our city. I believe that one viable solution so the issue to, is to attack the roots of it, poverty and a widespread lack of education. In an attempt to address the issues of education deficiency and poverty in the city, a learning to work model should be implemented for youth ages 16 to 25. This model would allow for Chicago area youth to go through a training program to learn a trade or useful skill. Once the training was complete, the youth would be placed in paid internships or jobs that would allow them to put those skills to work. The benefits of such programs are that youth are given the opportunity to learn applicable skills and then see them become useful, which is something that youth generally do not see in mainstream education. A few such programs already exist in the city, such as Genesis Works and Urban Alliance. The goal should be to increase the number of such programs and to expand the age group that they cater to. Programming will by no means eliminate the extreme violence that is engulfing our city. However, I believe that it is an effective and logical place to begin the reform. And what you, what you guys have been looking at on the screen um, is a monthly breakdown of the people who have been murdered in Chicago thus far this year in the ages. Um, this is by no means a comprehensive list. Um, these 143 names are just the ones that I was able to gather from a database um, that is managed by the city. The month of May has just ended today, and so far, not including the last week, this is how many people have been murdered in Chicago. Before we blossom, we must weather storms and forecast because every intersection can become Virginia Tech. So excuse me if the news be this is my emotions. See, being brown in bigger time as a town makes you endangered. And in the past two years, I've seen over 60 native sons set in the graves. I guess. This is the part where poets produce plans and we don't have any. In Chicago, anyone under age 20 is a target. And I don't know how to do more than be afraid that an age allowing me to be on this stage might have me murdered by Monday. I'm 18. I play pickup basketball games with ghosts. Is there a reason I'm making it out of a community that is modern young men I might be mistaken for? I don't know. 
Will they ever call you that beautiful? Your life is a sacrifice. A love story to teach us. How many deaths will it take before this is considered genocide?